The future of malaria control in Africa has to be anchored in quality data, quality assured data that countries can have complete ownership of and they begin to use to design the future of malaria control. I think there's too, too much emphasis at the moment on models that are generated in the north that aren't appropriate for Africa. There's far too little use of data that exists in African countries to support African governments in their decision making. And there needs to be a complete seed change in this use of evidence. And this is what this project is all about, basically. It's about increasing the capacity of countries to assemble the information that exists within their national borders and how they might use that to change the future. Well, the LINK programme as it is now is based at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, but it had uh, uh, an earlier history, as it were, which began in Nairobi, I'd say about two or three years ago, um, when we started working with the Kenyan government um, to try and assemble all the malaria epidemiological evidence so that they could better design the distribution of insecticide-treated bed nets, distribution of ACTs, um, IRS, and what they might do to improve progress towards reducing malaria morbidity and mortality in Kenya. And that was really a science and government collaboration where we're assembling the data, modeling the data, working closely with the National Malaria Control Program. And that relationship worked really well. So it helped the Kenyan government secure money from the Global Fund, helped them design their National Malaria Strategy, um, and was actually a classic example of assembling epidemiological data to design control. And I would say that's probably one of the first times it's been done for over 20, 30 years um, in Africa. Because at the time that the Rollback Malaria Initiative started, things were so bad across Africa, everybody just did everything irrespective of what the epidemiology was. So you just threw everything in the kitchen sink at malaria, ACTs everywhere, bed nets everywhere, irrespective of whether or not people needed it or it would be most effective. So after 10 years, we began to nuance that and fine tune it using data. And we've been working with, from the Kenyan Medical Research Institute in Nairobi, we've been working with other countries in Somalia, Djibouti, uh, Sudan, um, to do similar things. And the Department for International Development from the UK thought that this was something that was needed beyond our sub-region across Africa and they asked us to form a project that would do an epidemiological assessment in eight countries. That was a, a difficult job because there was lots of data available but the national malaria control programs hadn't pulled it all together in one centralised set of databases and that was part of our job was to actually find all this data that was held by different research groups, different NGO groups, pull it all together, put it on maps, model it, and begin to sort of develop a, a sort of an intelligence, as it were, is what we called a malaria intelligence system. In the initial phase, we worked in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Malawi, Mali, Ghana, and Nigeria. And it took us a year to complete all of those epidemiological profiles and we engaged with the National Malaria Control Programs in each of those countries and the research partners that helped support them provide the evidence in country and I would say some of the strengths of that which wasn't an anticipated strength was bringing that research and policy control communities together. Is it, it, in some instances, it was the first time that they'd opened up a real dialogue as to how you might use epidemiological science to design control. Now the ambition is to try and do that in 22 countries, um, try and support those countries uh, in building up an evidence base and get them to think, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, sort of intelligently about designing control so that they are rational with the use of their resources and that they're likely to have the biggest benefit.